and Viking and this is just a sheet of paper that's going to tell you the game I'm going to show you is Expedition Zeta. Now Expedition Zeta is a game for one to five people uh, in which uh, basically space exploration is the whole point of the game. Um, you are ostensibly uh, like it is like a victory point game where each person is trying to become the most famous group of uh, scientists, spacemen, what have you uh, that are aboard this warp drive mothership um, which is cool. Uh, like basically uh, the game is set in the 1960s, I think 1962 to be exact, and warp drive technology is exists, and uh, but you can't uh, like direct it, or you can't you can't you kind of have to guess as to where you're going, and so you're actually going to be creating uh, random solar systems that you're going to be heading into, and you're going to be going to those, and you're going to be trying to uh, collect minerals and collect resources so you can create these like cool new gadgets that can only be made in outer space, and also you're looking for life, and you're looking for things that are out there, discovering planets and what have you. But anyway, so. Like I said, ostensibly the game is a, a victory point game, in which case each person is trying to become the most famous uh, group. Uh, you're representing your home country, uh, be it Spain, Russia, I shouldn't, sorry, Soviet Union, uh, you know, the United States, Sweden, what have you. And uh, after you've explored four solar systems, uh, you will head back to Earth, and then whoever became the most famous uh, along the way uh, will be considered the winner. However, uh, I didn't really, I didn't really like see the game as being, uh, you know, a, a a victory point game. I mean, this was a game that like uh, I just found myself really enjoying uh, the plays of it, and even though yes. There were, like, goals, you know, like, go and find life, or create this this this, this machinery, or, you know, uh, explore that planet, or what have you. Uh, even though those goals existed, I, I didn't really care so much about making sure that I scored the most points. I was just having a lot of fun uh, just kind of existing in this game, in this game world, if you will. So, that being said... Um, let me go ahead and show you how the game is played, give you a good overview of how that works. Um, it is, it, 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 the, the, the creation of the solar systems is, is a lot of fun, but, and, and so I'm gonna to touch on that a great deal, but let's just do that, and then, and then, we will, uh, then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so before uh, we can actually take off and go inspect the universe and everything like that, uh, we have to uh, get equipment and we have to get crew uh, for our uh, little spaceship. Now remember, we have a large mothership that we're all gonna be riding on, but everybody's ship is within that mothership. So this is your uh, personal crew for your nation. Now you have this giant deck of cards um, that are gonna be both people and machines. And then you can see there's this little cost thing here. We're going to set up a three by three, three by three grid, and the costs are five four five, four three four, three two three, as you can see. So what you do is you're just going to put down a grid. Now, mind you, um, like when you're placing these down, uh, you're just going to be, you know, uh, doing this. You see, both sides of the cards have a person. On it. Now, admittedly, like the people, they have the leveled up version on the other side, um, but so you can see what the cards are as you're putting them down. Now you see I've put down people as you can see there's these three people and I'll talk a little bit more about what you're seeing here in just a second but I put down these people and I have two of these uh, machines. Now the game does specify that if you ever have like uh, too few machines and too few people to start off then you just reshuffle and you know, put them out, but it looks like we're going to have enough of each, as, as luck would have it. Now, these are the only times you're going to be able to hire uh, people and, and get things to work for you. So, uh, you need to be very cognizant of making sure that you have kind of a wide variety of people available to you, and powers available to you, and machines available to you as well. So, just, uh, and I'll go over that here in just a second. Now, what you do is, you're going to put the rest of the stack like this and notice how you can tell what the next thing is on the stack. All right, these little chips here, they have multiple uses. Right now that you're gonna get 20 of them and they're gonna be used to purchase uh, both 
the items and the people. And you just use that, you and like you spent 545, 434, 323. Remember, you get 20 of those. However, it doesn't exactly work um, the way that you think, okay, you just put the money down and you get it. So if you spend like five on this aether drive up here, like so, and you put your flag marker on there to denote that, you don't get to get it. The only time you ever get anything is if they manage to make it down to the bottom row. Now that does mean that if you buy something on the bottom row, like so, bam, at the end, then you would get to hire uh, this dude here, uh, Zhang Tao, the exoplanet specialist. And you take him and he'd be part of your crew. Now after your turn's done, what you're gonna end up doing, and I should mention that you take this little flag and notice how these are sleeved. You put that into the sleeve and you're gonna make sure that you know that that's him. The reason for that is, and I'll explain this a little bit later on, in the, in that you can somehow, you can sometimes lose control of your players, like other players will kinda get them to work for them instead. And so in order to make sure that the guy comes back to you, or girl, or machine, or what have you, you put your flag on the inside of the sleeve. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's what you do. All right, so then after you take that, what you can do then is you can then start sliding things down. In which case, like, you could slide like this, like this. And you could do this in any way. The only, the only exception is you can't do it uh, diagonally. And so then now you how that that's getting down closer. And so we'll go ahead and then we fill that back up like so. And then you can see like the next item here is uh, a gaseous planet gear, you know, so that helps you land on gaseous planets. So, all right, so then you have that. Now, if somebody else comes in and like they, they bought this machine, you know, maybe they don't want to help you. So they they just go kind of straight down like that and wouldn't get that over. But when your turn came around, if you, went ahead and like, uh, you know, picked up, um, you know, Ellen here, uh, the, the exo smooth talker, and you get to take her and you, 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 you get that automatically. And then if you moved it like so, you'd get this automatically because you moved it down there and you'd take that and claim it for your ship. And then the same thing goes, you know, you fill up the empty spaces like so. All right, you know, straightforward. And you're gonna do this, every person's gonna do that until they basically, they have no money left over, so they can't spend anything. You'd have to get down to either two or zero, I'm sorry, one or zero, because you can still purchase this spot for two coins. You can't ever just say, I'm gonna stop. Um, you just keep buying and what have you. Uh, mind you, you can only have four crew members and four uh, machines. If you have more of each at the end, um, you have to like discard down to that number or whatever. All right, so that's how you get it. Now, I just want to talk really briefly, just quickly, is that each like person is going to have like little specialties that are up here. They they'll tell you what the, can, they can do and what powers they have. And over here, this will tell you what the, you know, your machinery does. So in this case, um, and then you do get a cool reference sheet, which I'll show you here. Um, you can see like they have the different abilities here. You know, so you know here the uh, Zhang Tao has the ability to discover life. He has the ability to discover a substance, and the little hand there, if you look at his special abilities, he has the ability to borrow one equipment for one turn. So he has these little special powers, and then okay, and then this, like the, the equipment capacity, has the ability to make discoveries as well, because it has that thing, and also it's able to uh, land on gaseous planets, which is of course cool, because if you don't have that, then you can't inspect gaseous planets. All right, cool. So that is just kind of a brief overview of that section of the game. Uh, now I'm going to show you uh, how you uh, generate the, the universe or the, you generate the galaxy that you're, or solar system you're going to go to and then how you explore that. All right, cool. Let's do that. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, obviously, this is a prototype that I was sent, so just keep that in mind as I'm showing you how this game is played. Uh, the other thing is I, I didn't show you a couple of things about the setup. Uh, and um, you are going to, you know, pick a, a nation that you're going to be representing. Um, and so you can, and then this can be handed out randomly or you can pick. And then each nation has like its own special ability. Remember this is set in the 1960s, so the Soviet Union still exists. So, uh, you know, obviously I am going to, uh, you know, go ahead and take the Soviet Union because, well, because I can't normally in a lot of other games, right? Because the Soviet Union 
is going to be my nation. But, um, you know, you have several other, and they have little special powers they have. And then each person will randomly get a ship uh, that they can pilot. And remember, this is the ship uh, that you pilot away from the mothership. And also, these all have their special abilities as well. And so, you know, so, like, let's just go ahead. I'm going to take uh, the turn, if you will. That'll be my little spaceship or whatever. All right, so uh, after you get those, then what's going to happen, and once again, I, I apologize. One other thing. This, um, this, 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 the star map here that I got, it came to me very, very crumpled up, and I apologize, so there's a little bit of glare there. Um, but here, I'll give you a kind of a close-up look, and you can kind of see what you're looking at here. So, okay, in the center, there's going to be a star, and then there are the different orbits around the star. So A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, G, H, I, J, right? All right, so you're going to be moving on the star path, and I'm going to show you how you produce... Um, you know, uh, planets on these locations. Now, mind you, every time you see a dot, that's a movement. So if you're moving your ship from here to here, that, that's a movement from there to there. You want to go in clockwise fashion, because clockwise fashion costs less movement points to do it. If you go counteractive to the Counterclockwise is going to cost you an extra movement each time you do that. So just keep that in mind. All right, so, um, and then what's going to happen is is that we're going to procedurally generate, um, like, the planets in these locations. And now you're saying, well, okay, well, that's great. Uh, how do you do that? Um, you do that by um, rolling all of these 12-sided dice that are on this little insert that they've created for the game. And each one of these, you're just going to roll it, and each one of those is going to generate um, a uh, something uh, on on the on the board. Now it doesn't always going to create a, a planet, so to speak, but it is going to affect the solar system in some way. And I'll show you how that happens. So let me just roll these, and then I'm just going to find these one by one. So to begin with, I need. So I'm going to take the A card. So now these are shuffled, and you, and you and you show them. So like the A, the A card is the first, the first uh, uh, orbit, right? And so A star O. So the first thing it tells you, it tells you what type of star to take. So I need to find star O, and then we're gonna have. Okay, here is our star O. Now this is gonna tell us where the Goldilocks zone is. The Goldilocks zone is where life can possibly be found. So F, G, and H are the only orbits in which life is even possible to be found. And we can last, we can stay in this area for two turns, only two turns, and then we gotta leave. So we're gonna have to be fast if we're gonna discover anything. So you put the star in the middle like so, and now we're gonna go ahead and look at the die that we rolled that was a nine because notice how on this on, on a there's the, has the black on that hexagon so i'm going to go ahead and just put that nine in there like so and then we're going to look at nine and so nine says one now what does that mean basically what that means is you're going to look at this color so orange and a nine is a one and so what we're going to do with that one is that the ability to create an exo product, and I'll explain exo products here in just a little bit. Is orange. We're going to increase that by one. You'll notice that some of these had one well, of these had a negative number. That would have decreased it. Now this number goes from from one to twelve. It can never go above twelve, and it can never go below one. So just keep that in mind. Now we're going to do that in succession for each one of these for the for B, C, and D. So let's see. If, uh, so B is the red. So it is a two, and this is kind of cool. So we're going to get this started right. So this has a two, and first of all, it says minus one. So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease this by one. So it's down back to one, and now we look and see this O C N. That means that there is going to be a planet on two, and it's going to be an ocean planet. So, and I. I don't have, I have these kind of randomized up in here, so I think I see an ocean planet on the bottom. This is your, like, pile of ocean, or different planets. So I'm going to go ahead, find find an ocean planet that is an ice giant. Ah, here we go. So I just, and these will be set up and, and, and you know, have them random. So this is an ocean planet. This particular ocean planet um, if you're going to be collecting, trying to get substances off it, it's a minus one to get substance, and it is a plus two to find life. But, you know, we are, this isn't going to be an F, G, or H 
Uh, so it's impossible to find life on this ocean planet. But we do get to place this on the board, and this is going to be in orbit B. Now, what you do with orbit B is you're going to have to find out where on orbit B that is located. And it might be tough to see here, but basically on orbit B, it's like B1 through 3 here, B4 through 6, B7 through 9, B10 through 12. So we roll a 12 sided, and then it's B4, so it's 4 through 6. And so we're going to go ahead and place the ocean planet right there. All right, so I am going to pause this so you don't have to watch me do every single one of these, but I am going to go ahead and create the solar system now. And through the magic of video editing, uh, you will see it done very shortly. All right, so I have created my solar system. Now, just uh, I, I, I don't like zooming in on a lot of things, but I, maybe I can just give you kind of a better look here. So you can see now I have um, several planets uh, that, that I've generated because the cards up here told me to put different planets in different locations. Depending upon the stats that are on the cards, um, then I've gone ahead and adjusted the different discovery values. So in this particular solar system, um, it's going to be really relatively easy uh, to get substances, like to, to mine for, for things. It's going to be decent chance for finding life and you know not so great for making exo products and i realize i haven't really discussed exo products yet but i am going to get back to that in just a little bit so uh so you have these different locations and the different things that you can do um uh, interestingly um because of where because your mothership randomly shows up and i rolled a sick i got a six on the um the mothership uh, role, and you know, and and so I ended up in G6 for that because the mothership card had an orbit G, which is interesting because I have this big giant iron iron planet right there that um, has a really really good chance uh, to to have life. It has a plus two on its life score, which is pretty cool, and it is in the Goldilocks zone of F, G, and H, because it is in orbit H. So that's kind of a neat little thing. And remember, we knew that because of the fact that this O-type star, the Goldilocks zone, is F, G, H. Remember, we only have two turns in this particular location. So getting there and you know investigating that is probably maybe like my top priority, because finding life and discovering life is a really good way to get points and get fame in this game. So how do you do that? Okay, so everything's set up, everything's good to go. How do you go ahead and process that? How do you how do you how do you manage to do that? Well, the big thing is is that you're going to be using the abilities of your your crew and your items uh, to be able to to travel. And then once you're in those locations, then you want to go ahead and uh, attempt to succeed at dis at discoveries. Um, so. I'm going to go over the three different things you basically you, you're going to be discovering. Are you you're going to be discovering substances that you're going to be using later to make items. Um, you're going to be using you're going to be finding life, which is you know obviously uh, a huge thing to prove we're not alone in the universe. And the last thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be um, using uh, hopefully uh, using uh, a a like zero like gravity environments to create um the exo products that, that you're trying to create now i should mention one thing really quickly that you do have if you have any um like giants the like gas giants or anything like that they will have these little trojan uh like basically these 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 planetoids type of things which will have almost no chance of finding life on them uh with a minus five on there but they will have a you know a zero on, on on substances, and if you have any gas giants, you put those around those, and if you don't, then you just place them on the furthest out uh, on the board. Now those are locations that you can use to create um, your exo products, but you can also create exo products on your mothership, which is this right there. All right, so exo products. Like I said, I apologize, I haven't shown you that. At the beginning of the game, you will deal out a number of these and they will be in a tableau and these are different products that you can use that if you can create them then you can then use them uh, either as points at the end of the game or you can use them as 
uh, like items, like you, you can have them as actual uh, gear that you'll be able to use in your ship. And so they are, so like nanobots, um, plus one dice when used in attempts on PTR planets. Uh, pulsed Aether sensors, always move three steps more for the fuel spent. So it has these different things. And you'll notice that there's the colors up on top that tell you what you need to be able to create those things. Uh, so those colors are represented by these beads here which in another game would be cubes or whatever. This is a prototype, this is what I got. And you'll need to collect those substances from the planets. Now, how do you collect them? You know, remember you get substances to see what kind of substance you'll get from the planet. You know, notice like this one will give you a red cube for doing that. Um, so, you know, those are, that's how those things work. Um, so, like, basically like um, uh, green, uh, the green like beads here are like radioactive, which you can use for energy, which you can use for more fuel. Um, then like black is like rare metal, uh, white or the, the kind of like bluish is a gas, and and the uh, the red I believe if I remember correctly is iron. Uh, that that you know so it's just but regardless it doesn't really matter what they are except for green because green because you can use green uh, you can turn it into you know because it's radioactive material you can turn it in and use it as fuel but so these are the, and these will be out everybody can see them and the first person to make them will get get the points that are associated you know with that you know on, on the card so those will be out there so that's what exo products are and i apologize and the cool thing is you get a ton of them right and so not every game is going to be the same and you know like so you can't count on certain uh, material to be available all right so that being said how do you investigate plants really simple you spend you're going to get your energy like you did before just like you had when you did the preparation and mind you, your energy is what you have. Uh, you know, it doesn't normally come back unless you go out and harvest it on, on different planets by you know getting uh, these little green radioactive uh, powers. However, other players can trade you theirs and things like that, and you can aid other people as well. But you're going to use energy, you're going to spend one, and you're, when you spend it, you're going to get seven steps worth of movement. Now, the one difference is, is that if you have equipment or if you have a like a pilot that has this little ability right there that allows them to move any number of space because because they're, they're, they're an ace pilot for doing so but regardless so you act that power and then you go and then you can go ahead and go to the planet and it costs extra fuel to land on a planet remember that each step is one unless you're going counterclockwise in which case it's two and then um you know just so when you and it costs extra energy to land on the planet so once you land on the planet if you're the first person there you can place a flag on it to show that you're the person that discovered that planet you can even name it if you want my understanding is when this game comes out you'll have like kind of like a star log and a solar system log that you'll be able to like chart these things and so like you can actually like uh, remember certain plans, kind of a legacy aspect of the game, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, but once you land on it, then you're able to take the actions uh, to like harvest substances or discover life. So to harvest substances, what you're going to do is you're going to either use equipment that's going to like, so like this equipment right here, this, you know, gaseous gear, it can be used because it has that ability. You're going to wear down the equipment to do it, but you're going to use that equipment and you're going to roll a 12 sided and you're going to be trying to roll this number or less now if you have multiple people multiple pieces of equipment you get to roll extra d12s these are going to be affected however by the the, the planet itself in this one in this particular planet i believe from currently has a minus one to, uh, to harvest substances from it you know it's a little minus one on the red there so that little minus one but notice it's really easy you're going to get bonus dice yeah, let me see that you're going to get bonus dice to, you know, to get, uh, like, to find life. So, if you used, like, so, if I use two dice, if I had, like, because I'm using, like, an equipment, and I'm using one of my, uh, one of my people to do this, I'm going to get to roll two dice, but I have to roll minus, I get to have one, one less die. So, let me just see what I get here. I got a two, so that would be good enough. And then what I could do then is I could collect, you know, uh, one of these gases, and I get to go ahead and put that on my player board like so to show that I've collected that. And then later on, I can use that to create those exo products if I'm either on the mothership or on a Trojan, you know, where I would be able to do that. All right, so that's pretty simple. Now, life. 
that's like the thing is so now with life same exact deal oh and i should you know so you're going to like be attempting to succeed at those uh, particular actions it, just by rolling the die in this case it's a six or less but remember you get it plus two dice because of the fact so that you have pretty good chance you're going to discover life so i'm just going to go here uh seven let me just roll again two there you go so if you succeed in finding life you have this green deck and with the green deck you're going to turn over and let's see what we get. So it's a fish-like specimen. You can see it's going to be worth 10 points at the end of the game. And when you when you find life, you go ahead and put that in your current location on your board. And then at the end, afterwards, you'll put it in your storage. Now you do that, I should mention, you know, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you. There are like tons of these different life creatures, you know, amoeba specimens, and so on and so forth. And these are, you know, and some some of those like um, like humanoid artifacts and drawings. So, it, you know, it isn't exactly like a person, you know, whatever. Um, humanoid bodily remains, you know, so it, it's kind of cool. And each of these are worth a certain point. So this is a really good way to find fame if you can pull it off. But uh, after you've done that, however, I should mention that if you do create, if you go to like the mothership and you have the right things, so let's say uh, you create um, the Ziblon glass, you know, plus one dice when used for tens of any non-gaseous planets. Uh, when you make this, you place this in, you can place it in your storage or you can place it in your equipment. Now, if it goes into storage, because maybe you already have a bunch of stuff, then you don't get the bonuses. You know, it's basically, it's going to be worth points at the end of the game, uh, but but you don't get them. So um, just keep that in mind that if you decide to use, uh, put them in storage. All right, so next, after everybody has done all their exploring, they have to make it back to the mothership. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't have enough fuel to get back there, you suffer a penalty. Other people can like help you out and they can be your savior and to help you out. But if they do that, then they're gonna be able to you know, like take items from you as kind of payment for that. But eventually, your turns that, are, that you have available in, the, in this particular system. And you can have, like with like a G-type star, you do get like, you know, four, uh, uh, four turns. Um, like a K-type star is like three turns and so forth. But four turns is the maximum. But so you don't, you're not always as rushed as we would be as we are in this location. So eventually you head back and you're going to enter into the warp phase. Now this is kind of an interesting phase in the fact that this is where you get to kind of do a lot of upkeep. Now every time you use one of your pieces of equipment, it, it you know, it they keep going down and they, they, they bust. If you ever end up here and beyond repair, that literally means beyond repair. They, 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 you can't ever get them back. They're destroyed. They're used up. So you don't want to do that. You want to repair those. So having a character that allows you to repair is very important. Now, I didn't get one any of those, and, and but, you know, you can, however, um, get knowledge tokens, which are like these, and I should have actually showed these to you a little bit earlier. When you, uh, you get bonus, like when you discover planets, you get to reach into this bag um, and get get knowledge. If you attempt to create an exo uh, like exo product and you fail, you as as a um, like kind of a well you tried kind of thing, um, and you you get to draw one of these tokens from the exo thing. And a lot of these just like mimic certain powers. Like that's a romance power. Uh, that's the ability to collect substances, and so it gives you a little extra ability. Like and like this one. This is a little wrench, and I thought it was like a space cruiser at first, but now if you turn it around, see it's a wrench. <laughs> I was looking at where I thought it was like, wow, it's a spaceship. No, it's a wrench. But anyway, so um, so this will like give you the ability to use the ability to repair something, and when you repair something, you just pick it up and you put it in fully repaired. It doesn't go like up one. However, you can get people that have the ability to repair. Uh, and have that as an action that they can do during the warp phase. Like, here is... Ah! I just dropped him, of course. Here is... Um... Thuin, the exo-mechanic. And so you notice he has that repair function he can do. So, um, you know, so you can use those. Now, other things that you can do uh, during this 
phase, and I'll actually just show you all of these on the, on the thing here. So um, that we are showing the mechanic. Um, this priority ruler, uh, take one substance or put your flag in one discovery. Uh, so you can co-op somebody else's discovery. You can say, well, you know what, actually, uh, I think I was the one that, that, that you know, discovered uh, that exo product, or, or maybe I'm the one who discovered that life, you know, and, and you get to place your flag along with that uh, to kind of co-op those discoveries. And that's kind of a nasty ability to do, uh, but, you know, uh, you, you can, <laughs> basically, because that's where the rules work. Now, security, um, is it counters that. It counters the romance or borrow. Now, notice romance and borrow. Um, so I actually have a romance person. has a little heart there. Now, remember, you're on a mothership, and all of your players are on the same mothership. So they're going to see each other. And here I have the borrow on that guy as well. Basically, what that allows you to do is you get to take uh, one crew or take one equipment, um, for the next turn. And so, uh, they you only get to do it you know, for once, and then when they return, they're either brokenhearted or they're under suspicion. Like, you know, you basically, you maybe you've uh, corrupted the machinery or everything like that, so they can't be stolen again. But you are able to take somebody, like if somebody's got a really good crew member, and you want access to them, that's a real good way to take it, so you can use that again. And the, if you have this symbol, that's a warp scientist, you get to take a couple of warp tokens. And warp tokens are just used after you warp, because remember you warp randomly, you don't know where you're going. Warp tokens are used to affect that, and to, to like kind of uh, change where you're warping to. And it's just, it, and, and having those tokens will just give you more variable, like more a little more control over, over the warp tactics that you're gonna be doing. All right, so, um, after the warp phase is done, or after that that phase is done, like all those, and each, and basically you do that one by one. One person goes, next person goes, next person goes, and so on and so forth. And you go, and everybody takes their turns. And after everybody's done what they're going to do during that warp phase, then you're going to go ahead, and you don't do a prep phase again because you only did the very beginning of the game. You're going to create another star system, and you're going to do that again, and you're going to do that four times. Now, the only thing I haven't told you about is that you are going to have this level up track over here. Every time you succeed at something, like you, you created an exo product or what have you, you get to level this up all on this whole track until you get to this part that says level here. When that happens, you can take one of your people and turn it over to the spot that says leveled on the other side. And when they're leveled, then what happens is, is that they're worth two dice if they're doing an action. So if I had L Laura leveled and I wanted her to find substance, I'd get two dice for using her in order to do that instead of just one. If you've leveled up all of your people and you manage to level again, you will not go to, you'll just go up to this thing where it says nine steps. And that means when you expend an energy instead of moving seven, on, on the solar system, you get to move nine. You just get a permanent bonus. So that's the only other thing. Um, hopefully you got a pretty good overview of how the game works. I mean, there's a lot of other little uh, little rules here and there. The, I invite you to go ahead and read the rules in full. Uh, you can find those on the Kickstarter. Uh, and so you can kind of, you know, get a better grasp maybe if you want to find like a little more of the ins and outs. But um, it just goes in that process. You have that prep phase, which is fun, just kind of like getting your people and your, and your crew together. And then, I mean, obviously creating the solar systems is a lot of fun. I love the randomness of that. And then the whole like figuring out the puzzle of how am I going to go ahead and use the solar system? How am I going to get this stuff out of that solar system? How am I going to, you know, be able to score points this particular round? You do that four times, after that you warp back home, and whoever has the most fame at that point uh, will win the game. But let me talk more about all of that uh, in my final thoughts, which I'll do right now. All right, thank you very much for learning how to play Expedition Zeta. As I said, uh, like that, that creation of the, the solar system. I Okay, so who, who else bought into the whole No Man's Sky thing? me yeah <laughs> i'm sure somebody else did out there too that's watching this but uh regardless you know that game that that that, that game for the playstation i mean wow that that did not no it was it was not good but um i did like how uh the worlds were created randomly or i guess semi-randomly or whatever and uh you know, the whole, like, process of creating the different solar systems that you're going to be applying to, I mean, like, lots of games say, 
oh, this is going to be a completely different game each time you play. And I guess technically it is. But, I mean, seriously, each time you play this, you are going to create a brand new, radically different solar system than the last time you played. And I really like that. I mean, basically because that means that each time... Uh, the game is created each time, like the the solar system, the solar system uh, comes into existence. It's a brand new, you know, like puzzle, as I said earlier. It's a brand new uh, like setting in which I have to work hard at like trying to figure out how I'm going to uh, explore it, how I'm going to take advantage of it, how I'm going to you know find life there, find you know, the, the right minerals I still need to create, you know, whatever item that I want to create. And there's, there's that, that, it's just a wonderful aspect. I mean, the game could have been just that, and I would have absolutely loved it. Uh, and, you know, because it's just really cool. But you, you have this preparation phase, which I think was a really cool way to, like, kind of draft your crew uh, into your uh, into your thing. And I, I forgot one rule there. If you don't, man, you're prepping, if you remember going over that. Uh, you put your flag down, like, on the top row on something. You pay for it, and it sits there. If you don't manage to get that down to the bottom row before it's over, then you don't get it. Th th that's forfeit. Um, so, yeah, it sucks. And so you could actually end up with, like, having no crew. If that's the case, then you get, like, one random crew member. You have to have at least one person with you. But that... So... And the thing is, is that the game does have, like, a semi-cooperative aspect to it. Um, you know, like, people will work together. You can aid other people if you're on the same planet. You both want to try to find life and kind of work together for um, that, that thing. And, and there is trading in the game, so you can say, okay, I'll give you some of my fuel if you help me with this kind of thing. You can do those things. Uh, you know, so there, there's a wonderful aspect as far as that is concerned uh, with like having a semi-cooperative atmosphere uh, to it. Um, I Admittedly, yes, like when you get to the warp phase and you can kind of steal each other's stuff, I mean, that that is a little, um, you know, backstabby, if you will. Uh, but it isn't like a permanent thing. Uh, you get the people back, and that's why you put your, your token in their, their sleeve. So you, you know that's your scientist or that's your uh gaseous planet landing gear or whatever so you can get it back after the fact um so i mean it, it's kind of it's it, it it really walks that fine line between co competitive co uh cooperative and also like treachery if you will and 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 games i, I play lots of games that try to do that but they have but it doesn't pull it off but this one uh, it somehow does. I mean, it, it just seems like it has equal aspects of all those different uh, uh, themes, and, and they seem to reverberate well throughout the whole thing. Now, like I said, if the game was just about creating those star systems, I would love it regardless. But when you add in uh, the, the, the two bookends, uh, the prep and also that warp phase, I just found myself just really really enjoying playing the game um and I, I should mention that they do and i i, I the, here is like uh if you wanted to just use now uh, you probably can't see this but this actually lists off different um uh different solar systems that theoretically would be in range for us like alpha centauri is on top and then bernard star uh tau seti you know procyon so like all these things that are uh, that you possibly could be you know within like 10 11 12 light years away whatever you can just and then it actually tells you what what kind of plants to put and everything on there as well so it's kind of neat that like if you wanted to you can actually play in like places that we can see right now above and i thought that was kind of cool to include that so there you go that is expedition zeta if you want a really really cool space exploration game with some euro uh like mechanisms uh thrown in uh then i, I strongly suggest you check this one out um i really really had fun with it and i, I love i love the 1960s theme of it and just uh the game was just the exploration. I love exploration in games, and this one had it in spades. So, so there you go. If you have any questions, ask away. As always, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, I'm the Viking, telling you to have a great day.